Hello, welcome back to Brenda Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna talk about rays. Rays like um, in ray of light. In um, currently, we have a modifier that deals with rays, uh, and it's called um, shrink wrap. If I'm not wrong. If we use string wrap on the cube, for example, and then set the target to plane, it's kind of projecting itself. Um, that's kind of interesting, um, by because by default it's a uh, it's using this nearest surface point, so it's kind of just snap to the grid, snap all the points to the grid. So, but we have this project, and project is slightly more interesting because we can uh, control the, the directions negative, positive and I think we can control the axis as well I don't know I hardly ever use auxiliary target but I think if we use a locator no well but anyway uh, we're not gonna use string wrap. Actually, there's also cast. I think cast is um is inter it's an interesting one. Uh, but we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna use spare chalk to do it for us. So let's save this real quick. This is gonna be ray casting basic using spare chalk. Zero zero one. Okay, ray casting. Let's grab. Um, let's let's get the node first. Um, we just gonna need ray. So it's an object ID ray cast MK two, and there's a scene ray cast MK two. Um, This one I never really use, but object ID probably simpler than this guy. I don't know. I I never use sin raycast yet. So if we just look at the node here and then just kind of guess what it does, it has the origin and direction and object. Um. I think the object is where the point is going to be ray casted or projected so the object should be grid in this case our plane and the the origin is going to be the actual objects so we can have like Suzanne as well or the torus uh, let's start with the cube Let's grab the cube real quick. Mm. Object ID out MK2. That's the node that we're gonna use. I think safely safe to say that all kind of nodes that has object ID will deal with the object itself and it can output all sort of stuff. Like uh, the vertices in this case, for example, if I grab the monkey, okay, plug into the origin, grab Suzanne, and then plug into the origin. We know that the output from here is going to be the vertices. And how about the, the output from this node? Um, let's have a look. Success and face index. Success is green color, so it's not the vertices, but I think hit P is the hit point. This is the one that we're interested in. So, let's see what we get. At the moment, there's a, like single dots there. Single dots, not so interesting, but maybe because we haven't supplied the direction here. So, 
for the directions I can uh, we can use vector in or we can also use the axis like uh, there is a vector Z XYZ and the there's another one axis Z this guy they are similar with the directions um, let's say we want it in the Z so positive Z negative Z kind of similar one is probably uh, give the direction that's pointing up one is going down this one is going down so it's projecting the monkey at the original positions directly to the floor um, now I tried using a matrix apply here vertices and matrices plug into that guy it doesn't doesn't seem to work unfortunately I don't know why um, if I use the object in MK2 and get selection this will probably work <clears throat> where apparently it doesn't work either it doesn't really project it from this position so that's uh, the first gotcha or but anyhow this this actually works it projects the monkey as if it is uh, currently in the current position if I move the grid yeah same thing happens it um, unless I actually hit apply here apply locations then that guy move slightly apply location scale okay now it moves so just uh let's just do that for now um, with the monkey with the monkey here there's a post modifier if you if you want to kind of modify the monkey using joints or let's say if we change this to the torus obviously this gonna update if we are rotating or whatever it will not actually apply I try using the matrix apply it doesn't quite work so I wonder why oh actually it does work with the it does actually work so let's try the monkey again then okay that's actually working maybe because of the because the grid was not placed in the right position so the grid matters because the grid here um, doesn't have um, transformations apply yet but this guy works so that's good we can scale rotate and we get this imagine the things we can do with these points at the moment it it really doesn't do much it's just a bunch of points being being right projected down um, I actually there's a lot of uh, possibilities here with origin and direction I think if I use random random vector uh, this can be interesting because it's a um, you can give like bunch of value it's kind of sort of at the moment it's kind of like uh, it's projecting the points one by one in random directions this can be interesting um, although it will be more interesting like if <clears throat> if the behavior is more like um, spotlight yeah so that's gonna be more interesting projection at the moment I I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it yet. With random vector, it's kind of pushing all the points, ray casting it around. Like um, let me see. If I change this to the cube, oh, it's projecting using random. Let's go back to the direction. So it's much simpler.
I think the point here can be interesting. I don't know um, how to explain it, but obviously with the rate cast points here, we can um, maybe use like KD3 or just the things that can kind of generate a new surface. Yeah, that's um, that's interesting. Not so useful. Maybe it depends. If we use the monkey, of course, KD three will kind of connect the dots there. It's gonna change depending um, depending on the scale and how far. The points from each other. There is also the convex hull, maybe convex hull and vertices. Maybe we can get a um, just like the outside, kind of like the bounding. See, it's giving that kind of flat, flat result. That might be what you want, but let's see. Maybe not convex hull, not KD3. Maybe we can use the um, filter, mesh filter. Yeah, I like I like the mesh filter because it does this um, filtering. Um, Actually, it's a kind of thinking um, interior boundary wire. Maybe this will work. Boundary interior convex concave contiguous. No. Um, no, not, that's not gonna work. Vertices, yes, vertices, um, interior. That's a little bit slow, but my plan was uh, I was wondering if I could just you know trace the outer of this. Kind of like tracing the silhouette of the objects. Uh, not maybe not. Um, I'll draw it using grease pencil. For a stroke placement on the surface, and let's trace this Suzanne. Oops, it doesn't place the stroke there. That's the source, maybe object. Draw. Hmm, that's weird. Should place it on the surface. But anyway. Yeah, this is a this is right cast. It's um at the very basic it casting the objects down because of these directions, minus one. I wonder if I use a cube for it instead of a grid. I'm gonna delete the, the grid and grab this uh, cube and then scale the cube and apply it. Apply the scale and then update. Now we have the monkey being projected down. I can project it up. Okay. I can project it in any direction. <clears throat> which can be can be interesting if I project it using random random vector I don't know how many points Suzanne has um, 
Suzanne has 507 points. Just remember that. Now I'm projecting every point of Suzanne all around this room. Um, this is kind of like mildly inter interesting, right? It can be it can be anything. This um, like the points. Like if we use the KD three once again, I don't know. I can't think of anything else. See, you have this kind of uh, star, kind of simulations based on Suzanne points. The cube can be bigger. So yeah, that's a um, object ID raycast. There must be a lot that I'm missing at the moment. This is only the basic. I just only found out about this there because I was looking at the object ID. There's a point on mesh and object ID raycast. So these two are interesting. The point on mesh doesn't sound so clear that uh, on what it does, but I think this will read whatever points that's currently on top of surface of a mesh and then you can kind of trace it. Raycast is interesting. Like um imagine a bunch of points and then if you have like a kind of like a boundary and then this guy can find find the closest points and then kind of trace it. That kind of thing requires some kind of algorithm so but that's possible I think it's possible with spare chalk um, but anyway that's a that's a point raycast node in spare chalk it's a this thing is almost hidden not many not many people know or ever use it I, I don't think uh, maybe cost for use it um, one of the spare chalk developer I think he made it it does this um, casting oh well let me think of something real quick so maybe instead of um, grid we can use UV sphere and then I'll scale it like that apply a scaling and then get the sphere it's got projected I wonder if I plug in the Suzanne polygon into that guy okay we have a mesh let's hide this uh, sphere so we have this Suzanne how about how about the edges it's also still a mesh quite a mesh actually so it won't work like that, KD3. Um, it does projection, but not in the... It's not in the ray. It's not like this guy. It's not like this uh, cast modifier, which will turn Suzanne into sphere. That's a, This is something else. But anyway, object ID raycast. If you have suggestion or if you if you know something that I didn't mention here, because this is supposed to be really basic anyway, kind of uh, understand how to bring in the points and then kind of project it in certain direction. If you know kind of a usage of raycast that I have not mentioned here, just let me know in the comments below. Um, thanks again for tuning in to this video. I'll see you in the next video.